Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave from Evil Eye Games, and today we're going to add a little bit more functionality to our character. I want to add the ability to sprint. So the first thing we're going to have to do is go to our project settings and to input. We're going to go ahead and add another action mapping, and I'm going to call this action mapping sprint button. And I'm going to use the left shift button to sprint. And we can go ahead and close out of that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our player controller. And we're going to have to get that action event. So we're going to search for sprint button. And what I want to do specifically with the sprint button is create a toggle so that when the player presses it, it's going to toggle sprinting on and off. So the first thing we want to do is create a new variable. It's going to be a Boolean, and we're going to call it is sprinting. And we're obviously going to want to set that variable. And instead of just having pressed set the sprinting to true and release set it to false, I'm going to get the value of is sprinting. I'm going to perform a not operation on it. And I'm going to set the value. So basically this works as a flip-flop. So it'll take whatever value is sprinting, flip it, and set is sprinting to that new val value. Uh, one other thing we also want to do here is I want to check to see if the player is moving. So if the player is standing still, I do not want it to toggle the sprinting. So we're going to get the move forward value. And we want to check to see if this is greater than zero. So is the character moving forward? Uh, we're going to put in a branch. And if the character is moving forward, then yes, we want to go ahead and toggle this. So that should be it for the sprint button. We're going to compile and save. And then we're going to go back and we're going to go into our NMBP. So we're going to have to add in the animations. So in the asset browser, I'm going to search for sprint. Um, so we're going to have a start animation. And I'm going to call this sprint start. Then we're also going to throw in the loop animation, the actual running. And I will call this sprinting. And then we're going to have a stop animation to come to a complete stop. Now, this package includes two of these animations, one for the left foot up and one for the right foot up. We're not going to really see the feet of our character, so it isn't going to matter a whole ton which one we use. So I'm going to use the left foot up stop animation, and we'll call this rifle stop. And we're going to go ahead and connect these up from rifle walk to sprint start, from sprint start to sprinting, sprinting to rifle stop, and rifle stop to rifle walk. I'm also going to create another transition rule coming from sprint start back to rifle walk. In the event that the player stops sprinting in the middle of this animation, it'll look much smoother and respond much better if it just goes straight back to the walk animations. So for these transition rules from walk to start, we're going to want to check if we're sprinting. But we don't have a variable yet, so we're going to have to go into the event graph. And over here where we have cast to our player controller, we want to drag off that cast. And we want to get is sprinting. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to promote this to a variable. And I'm going to call this is sprinting. So that way we're very clear on what this is. We're going to go ahead and connect everything up, tidy it up just a tad. So now we're able to pull the value of is sprinting. So we can go back to our anim graph and we're going to check to see if we're sprinting. And we can 
simply plug that in. Next, we're going to have to handle what happens after the end of the sprint start animation. We only want this animation to play once, so we're going to go ahead and open up the transition from the sprint start to sprinting. And we're going to use the remaining time on the animation to dictate when we transfer over to the next animation. So I'm going to search for ratio. And there's going to be the option for time remaining. Um, this is going to give us the value of basically how much time is left in that sprint start animation. We're going to drag off of here and we want to see when it's less than a certain value. And for this value I'm going to put in 0.4 so when the animation gets to about 0.4 seconds remaining, it's going to begin the transition over to the sprinting animation. So we're going to go back. We have to fill in the sprinting to the rifle stop. For this, we are going to check to see if we're sprinting. And we want to make sure it's false, so we're going to throw in a not operator. But one thing we also want to do is this animation comes to a complete stop animation-wise. We also want to check our move forward value. So we want to check move forward and we want to see if it is less than or equal to zero. And actually for this we don't really need the is sprinting. This is just going to ha handle what happens when we let go of the forward running key. So we can actually get rid of that. We just want to make sure that uh, move forward is less than or equal to zero. So we can go ahead and plug that transition in. And for the rifle stop animation, uh, once again, this is a single off animation. So we're going to search for ratio, uh, select time remaining, and we're going to check to see if it's less than 0.4. And we're going to go ahead and connect that up. And the one last thing that we're going to have to look at is if we want to go from sprinting to the regular walking animation. So we're going to drag off from sprinting over to rifle walk. We're going to double click on that transition rule here. And for this one, we're going to want to check to see if we're is, uh, we're going to want to check to see is sprinting false. But we're also going to want to make sure that we are still moving forward. So we're going to get the move forward value. And we're going to compare this to see if it is greater than zero. And we're going to throw in an AND operator. Connect these pins up. And we should be good on that animation. Um, one thing to also note is we're going to need a way to transition to a not sprint state. Um, in the event of going from sprinting to rifle walk, this is going to be triggered by if the player hits the sprint key. But if we take our finger off the forward move key, um, we don't actually trigger the is sprinting variable to be set to false. It just goes through this transition. So what we're going to need to do is find some way to set is sprinting to false in our player controller. And I'm going to do this by using a animation notification. So if we go into our rifle stop and we actually open up the sprint stop animation, we're going to add a notify in here. And what a notify is going to do is when the timeline of this animation hits that point, it's going to trigger a notify. And we can use that notify to trigger other events. In this particular case, we want to set the is sprinting to false. So uh, at the very beginning of this animation, uh, we're going to go ahead and right click and we're going to click on our select add notify and new notify. And we're going to call this stop sprinting. Next, what we're going to have to do is actually implement this stop sprinting notify. So I'm going to save this and we're going to go ahead and click on the graph again. And I'm going to go over to the event graph and we're going to have to get this notify. So if I right click on here, 
and I want to search for stop sprinting. You'll notice now there is a add anim notify event called stop sprinting. So if we click on that and drag it in, basically whenever that animation plays and it gets to that point, it's going to call whatever this is. So what we want to do here is we're going to need to get our player controller because that's what holds the value that we want to manipulate. And we're going to have to cast it so it knows it's our custom player controller. Um, so we're going to cast to 3P player controller. And from here, we can get the value of is sprinting. Now, what a lot of people will do is they will pull off a value from here. So say, in our case, is sprinting. And they will directly set is sprinting off of a cast call like this. And anytime you have a variable in another blueprint, I would highly advise against doing this. Um, you want whatever blueprint has that variable or whatever blueprint that variable is contained in to handle that variable itself. Um, there's a possibility of having some memory issues with this. So we're going to get rid of this set is sprinting. And we're going to go back to our player controller. And on the left here under functions, I want to create a new function. And we're going to call this set is sprinting. And I'm going to add a new input. And this input is going to be a sprinting. So we're going to pull out our variable here. And we're going to set is sprinting. And we're just going to plug up these pins. We're going to compile and save. And then back over at the anim blueprint, we're going to pull off of our player controller cast and we're going to find set is sprinting and there is the actual function here we don't want the um, actual direct call to the variable itself so we'll select the function set is sprinting and we want the is sprinting to be set to false so we can go ahead and compile and save at this point it is going to throw up an error um, the sprint start to rifle walk will never be taken. So this one in between here, our correction uh, from the sprint start back down to the rifle walk here, so our return value. Um, now is sprinting is what sets it up to the sprint start. So we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to get is sprinting. We're going to perform a not operation on it. So if sprinting is false, it'll return a true. And we're going to go ahead and plug that in. So let's hit compile and save, and it compiles successfully. So if we go back and let's test this out and see how it works. So if I move forward, look around, I'm going to go ahead and hit the sprint button, and he moves into a sprint animation. If I hit the sprint button again, he stops sprinting. If I go into a sprint and let go of the forward motion button, he comes to a stop. And if I hit forward again, he does his regular walk. So it's been the uh, is sprinting variable got reset at this point. Um, now the sprinting animation here kind of looks a little bit slow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually speed up this animation. Um, and the nice thing about using root animations here is if we speed up the root animation, he's actually going to actually run faster in the game. So let's go to our anim BP and in our sprinting loop here, if we select the sprint loop animation down here to the right under the settings, there is a pin as a play rate. And what we can do is we can set this. Uh, I'm going to set it to 1.5 and we're going to see how we like that. And what this play rate is going to do is it's basically going to play it at 1.5 times the speed of the original animation. So let's compile and save and we'll go ahead and hit play. And if I hit shift, he seems to run a good bit faster and I actually like the animation speed. But one thing I think here with the transition, 
I uh, just want to check on it, make sure it looks smooth when he starts sprinting. There's a little bit of a jump in there. So when he starts running right there, there's a little bit of a bobble. So what we're going to do is in this transition from sprint start to sprinting, I'm going to up this variable a little bit. And what this is going to do is it's going to start the transition from the sprint start to the sprinting animation a little bit. And we'll see if that fixes the issue. And that actually looks a whole lot nicer. Now I don't have a very large area to run on here because we haven't really set up a map yet. So I'm just ridiculously running around in circles. But the animation transitions do look pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it is something we can definitely tweak later if it needs it. Uh, but for now, this I think I'm going to be satisfied with. And at this point, that's going to end our tutorial. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.